Hi, it's me again, and today I've got a story from the BBC News website, which is rare for me, but typical BBC, they're missing out some important information in there. Who'd have thought it, eh? <laughs> Let's have a look. Households cancel streaming services to cut costs, reports says. Yeah, I've been hearing this a lot lately. People are cutting back on stuff they consider luxuries, what with the cost of everything in a minute. It's mental, isn't it? I mean, I've even cut down a bit. We cancelled Disney Plus because we didn't use it enough, and I've cancelled my Amazon Prime, mostly to stop me blooming ordering stuff on Amazon. But people are cutting back, but I don't think all of it is just because of the cost of living crisis. I mean, the subscription services went mental, didn't they, during lockdown. Everyone was subscribing because they had nothing better to do. But now life has come back to normal a bit more, People are thinking, well, we don't watch it as much as we did, are they? But they are missing out something very important on this article. So let's go through it and see if you can guess what they're missing out. You probably can. A total of one and a half million services were canned in the first three months of 2022. And the survey said that more than half a million cancellations were attributed to money saving, with households budgeting for higher prices and energy bills instead. Yeah, I don't blame people, really. I mean, if you have a few of these, it really does mount up. You know, it really does, doesn't it? I mean, at one point, we had Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney+, Plus, Discovery+, Plus. I had F1 TV, the catch up one. It was only a couple of quid a month. What else did we have? I think we, had, I think we were trying Now TV as well. And it really racks up, you know, the cost of these things. Like, the missus has Spotify. I've got Apple Music. They're gone. Getting rid of them. You know, because price of everything. We've just got to cut back a bit. So, yeah, I can see it. Besides mounting cancellations, the early months of 2022 saw the lowest ever rate of new subscribers. In January, Netflix said it added 18.2 million members last year, roughly half the number who subscribed in 2020. Yeah, but it's not giving you the full story, is it, really? Because 2020, people couldn't really leave the house too much, so they wanted something else to watch, and they're prepared to pay the 8 99 a month, because it's not like you can spend it outside, was it? Ah, uh, this bit has annoyed me. They're talking about ads, right? Netflix chief financial officer Spencer Newman added fuel to the fire saying in March, it's not like we have a religion against advertising. And data across Great Britain shows Netflix subscribers' attitude towards advertising is softening with 44% now stating they don't mind seeing it on streaming services if it makes them cheaper. Yeah, you say that, but I love Discovery Plus. I think Discovery Plus is my new favourite streaming service. I can't get enough Discovery Plus. I like so much stuff on it. There's loads of car stuff on there as well. It's not an advert. I'm not sponsored or anything. I just like it. I think I pay, what, $3.99 a month? It's a bargain. An absolute bargain. But it shows ads. It does show ads. So you're paying $3.99 a month and still seeing ads. And yeah, all right, fair enough. That's why it's $3.99 a month. I could pay $6.99 a month and get rid of the ads. I'm not going to do that. But my problem with the ads isn't that there are ads. You know, that's life, right? I say we should have ads all the time. I make money on YouTube from ads. You know, well, not a lot, obviously, anymore. But, um, yeah, the problem with it is Discovery Plus only have, like, four ads. And they just go round and round and round. It drives us mental. We have to hit mute now when the ads come on and Discovery Plus just drives us mad. So this whole story here is talking about People cancelling subscription TV services to save a bit of money and these services showing ads. This is on the BBC News website. Nowhere in here does it say anything about people cancelling the TV licence or pushing the BBC to show ads. It's all right for all the other streaming services, BBC, isn't it? But you're not going to do it yourself, are you? But people are cancelling. There's a story in the Express here. Britain's cancel TV licence as cost of living crisis forces cut in luxuries. That just makes me laugh how the BBC can have a story all about cutting costs of TV subscriptions and stuff and not mention how many people are cancelling the TV licence. Nice, fair and unbiased news there from the BBC again, eh? Readers have been taken to the express.co.uk and speaking out about how they have cancelled their TV licence, saving them 159 quid a year. A BBC licence is needed if people watch live programmes on any channel. However, people who never watch live programmes on any channel or iPlayer don't need a licence. So yeah, it is good. The Express have got loads of articles about this. But, you know, they're talking about, <laughs> in all these articles, people cancelling their Amazon Prime and their Netflix and everything. Like the BBC article was. <laughs> I just, don't it make you laugh? The BBC keep going on about how our news is fair and completely unbiased. Then in an article about cancelling TV subscriptions, they don't mention the millions of people cancelling the TV licence. <laughs> Another bit that really winds me up on this Express story, a TV licensing spokesperson said, 
We want to help customers remain correctly licensed and we continue to work with groups throughout the UK which support people who fall into financial difficulty. And they are, their PR agencies are working with all these debt charities across the country. And I think only like one in 10 that we checked on this channel, didn't we? We're actually giving information that you can cancel your TV license and what you can watch without it. Only one in 10 of these debt charities. And look, people are struggling. This article is about people cancelling their TV licenses with information about what you can and can't watch. And a TV license spokesperson says, we want to help customers remain, remain correctly licensed. Not, look, here's the thing. If people are struggling and they don't want to watch anything that's being shown or use iPlayer, you can not pay it and maybe you'll come back to us in the future. But if you're struggling... You know, you cannot buy it. Isn't that what a fair company should do? Oh, hang on. I just said the words fair company about television licensing and the BBC, didn't I? That was my mistake. So what do you think about this then? I mean, hopefully if you're watching this, you've cancelled your TV licence or you're at least thinking about it. But have you got subscription services? Have you been cutting back on them like we have? You know, because we're feeling it as well. And it's a lot of money coming out every month just to have these subscription services. But I do find it funny that the BBC website... Doesn't mention it at all. Fair and unbiased news there from the BBC. Well done. So yeah, let me know what you think about all this and what ones you've cancelled down in the comments below. And I'll see you in another video again soon. Thanks for watching.